What's the deal YouTube? It's your boy Tank B Chopping and I'm back with another haircut tutorial. All right, so what we finna do is we actually finna cut all this hair off. Uh, he'd been having the comb over for a while. He, just, he said it was too hot for this, he's tired of it. So we're gonna do a number six and a ball fade. Let's get it. All right, so I'm using my Fabulous custom FX to go over the top. I got my number six guard on there and I'm just taking all that hair off. I didn't even give him a chance to think. I said, you know what? You telling me we cutting it? We cutting it. Let's go. So as you can see, I have the comb in my hand, making sure I'm combing the hair down and up that way. Basically that way, you know, I get all that hair down to that number six length and uh, it's all even and it's all the same length on top. That way we don't have no peaks, no valleys, and we don't have no stray hairs or we don't have no hairs that are longer than the rest. So obviously y'all see I'm going over the top and uh, around the prior ridge a good amount of times uh, obviously like I said he had a lot of hair so you want to make sure you get that all down so it's going to take a little while to knock this down make sure it's all even but yeah you got to go over it a couple times but it is what it is so that's what we're doing guys and uh, also uh, I really don't know what happened if I stopped recording or if the file got damaged or what but some of the footage uh, it got deleted, like it ain't it ain't come up on my camera. I don't know, it didn't come up on my card when I tried transferring the files over. So uh, it's gonna jump to like him already bought it out. But yeah, it's all good though. Y'all still gonna see the full tutorial. It's just, y'all ain't gonna see me bought him out and hit him with that shaver, but y'all know what it is. So like I was saying, he's already bought it out and I did hit it with the shaver to take it down the skin. And now I'm starting my next guideline. I'm using my uh, Gamma Ergos. And I have my lever all the way open and I'm coming up about three quarters of an inch and I'm flicking out towards the top of that section. Remember guys, no matter what clippers I use, I do the same steps. Like it might be slightly switched up, but I, for the most part, I do the same exact steps. Uh, I keep it real similar and real simple, at least for me. And uh, yeah, for me, it works and it gets these lines out and it makes these fades look good. So as you can see, I adjusted my lever halfway closed and I'm coming up right below what I just did. And then I'm gonna close the lever all the way and flick out that bottom line. And remember guys, if it doesn't take out that bottom line, that's fine. We're gonna come back over that with the trimmers if needed. And uh, I'm going to be completely honest with y'all guys, uh, this is like my second or third time cutting his hair and uh, his hair is a little difficult for him. He always waits a while to get a haircut and uh, he's got, you know, dips and different hair texture in certain areas. So it was a little harder than normal, uh, but we got it done. Here's my number one guard. My lever is all the way open and I'm coming up another section. And remember, I'm flicking out towards the top of that section. So the same thing with this one, I'm coming up about three quarters of an inch. And then I'm adjusting that lever closed. So most of the time I do all the way open, halfway, and then I close it. Uh, and then I just basically just alternate between those three, uh, three notches if needed. You know, all the way open, halfway, and then closed. My one and a half guard now, as you can see, I'm coming up to about that parietal ridge and I'm flicking out. My lever is all the way open. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna close my lever and I'm gonna attack the bottom of that section. That way it takes away them dark spots and it tries to get this fade a little more blurry than what it is now. All right, so now I got my number four guard and I'm gonna start actually uh, doing the fade down process. Uh, I use the number four. Now here's my number three guard and I'm going right below what I just did. So this is basically around the parietal ridge, uh, maybe a little higher, but I am flicking out. I'm really not putting too much pressure on the head when I, when I do this uh, part of the, uh, the fade. So same thing with my number two guard, guys. I'm coming up right below what I just did, not putting too much pressure. I'm really just, just getting that line. I'm just softening, uh, softening that line up a little bit, uh, trying not to go into the shape of the head. I'm actually flicking out. That way this, this fade still looks squared and it doesn't give this man too much of a round, a round shape on the fade. So here is my one guard attacking them dark spots. My lever is closed and I'm using some corner blending. So like I said, guys, this haircut was a little more difficult for me than normal. Uh, but sometimes we get those cuts, man. We just gotta, you know, follow the process and then really get down when it comes to the detailing. 
So I haven't used the 116 on them yet. I don't even remember if I did. This cut was like two weeks ago. I, I'm pretty sure I did, but uh, yeah, let, let's let's keep watching. All right, so yeah, here's my 116 guard. And as y'all can see, that area right there that I'm tapping, I think that part gave me the most, the most, like the hardest time just fading him up. Like he has, he's got like a little dent in his head due to the way his, uh, his bone structure is in his head. And it just gave me a hard time right there. So I ended up uh, raising the fade slightly. But uh, I think I think it came out good. I think it was a good call. Uh, but y'all gonna see me messing with that part of his, of his head a lot, just because, you know, I wanted to make sure his fade looked good, and it took me a while to get it right. So I used the 116, then I used the lever open, and I went back. So I went over it quite a bit, but I think it was needed to make sure the, I think it was needed, you know, just to make sure his fade looked good. And now I just got my lever open and I'm gonna adjust that lever where I see, uh, where I feel it's needed. And so remember guys, even though I did my initial steps, I always tell y'all it's, uh, it's real crucial when it comes to the detailing. Like the detailing is what, is what makes these blends pop. Like if you just did the steps, the fade might look okay on some people. And in this situation, it didn't. Like it still looked real choppy, still looked like it needed a lot of work. So obviously I'm, I'm coming back in, I'm gonna be doing a lot of detail work. So here is my 116 guard once again, still hitting them dark spots, trying to make sure this fade looks good. Now I got my number one guard, same thing, I'm coming up, adjusting that lever, and I'm just attacking dark spots. Now I'm taking my trimmer from Babilis, and I'm tapping that bottom line, making sure that line gets out of there, that way this fade looks better. And then we're back to detailing. <laughs> so, so sometimes, guys, you, you got to do this. Like, you, you're going to have to go over spots a lot of times. Uh, so I could have done this from the jump, I guess you can say. You know, I could have put that one cent guard on there and brought it up, brought the fade up from the jump. But uh, the way I did it, I think, helps me from bringing the fade too, too high. And it also helped me keep this fade looking good without, you know, having to do a lot of extra work. So even though, like I said, I am doing a lot of work to it, I think it could have been worse if I would have just took that 116th and came, you know, from the jump and brought that line up really high. So here's my number four guard, right above that parietal ridge and I'm flicking out, just floating it across the head. Same thing with my number three guard, flicking out and floating out. Anything above the parietal ridge, guys, you really don't want to push into the head. You want to start flicking out and you want to float that clipper away. That way it gives a nice transition and it doesn't start to push the fade too high. So like I was saying earlier, guys, sometimes you have to do this. You have to take this time to detail that way the fade comes out good. Just, I mean, really so the clients come back to you and the clients are pleased. Like, you know what I'm saying? I guess you don't really have to do it. You, I could have just let him walk out of there with the haircut, but it obviously wouldn't have been a good haircut and he probably wouldn't have liked it. And I probably wouldn't have had good, you know, uh, good word of mouth. He wouldn't have had good things to say about the haircut. So obviously I want to make sure my clients feel good when they leave the shop. I want to make sure they're satisfied with the haircut. That way they can, they can, you know, spread the word. Because as y'all may or may not know, word of mouth is still like the best form of advertisement and promotion. So you give this man a good cut, he's gonna go out, he's gonna spread the word, more people are gonna seek me out, and they're gonna uh, schedule appointments, they're gonna come in, and we're gonna do the same thing, and it's just a never ending cycle, you know, that's how you continue to get clientele, is you give your clientele good cuts, let them spread the word for you, and they're gonna bring in more people for you, and then you just repeat that process over and over again. It's pretty simple, but you know, I just wanted to put that out there, you know, sometimes people ask how do you get clients, and a lot of times, most of my clients do most of my promoting for me. All right, so now that that's done, guys, as y'all can see, the other side of his head was already lined up. So I'm starting off in the middle, uh, going over what I just did, and I'm just uh, following that to the opposite side of his head. That way I connect both sides of his edge up and make sure it's lined up nice. So I don't know if y'all can tell, but he's got uh, some dark spots in the corners. So we're just going to hit some enhancements on that in a little bit, make sure it darkens that up slightly. So what you can do also is you can raise the edge up a little bit, but that's not what we wanted to do. I didn't want to give him uh, too much of a, 
of a bigger forehead, you know what I'm saying? Not that he has a big forehead, but I'm just I'm just saying we didn't want to push that edge up too far up. Uh, I did raise it up slightly. I felt I raised it up good enough to where it gave a nice crisp line, but not where it was pushed up too high. And that's just something you got to just make an executive decision about when you're cutting the hair. So as y'all can see, uh, still doing some more detail work. And even though it seems a bit excessive, I think this detail work really like really made this fade pop because I, I didn't like the way it was looking at the beginning of the cut. But uh, as y'all can see, all that detail work that I did helped bring this haircut together. All right, so now as y'all can see, I'm just lining them up with the razor, going over everything I did with the trimmers. Making sure them lines are nice and crisp. All right, guys, so this is the before cut. And this will turn it into. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this haircut in the comments, guys. Uh, if you haven't done so, please smash that like button. Subscribe one time for your boy. If you haven't done so, I'd greatly appreciate it. And uh, yeah, man, this is the cut. You know, uh, I think it came out pretty good. Like I said, he does have a hard... It is, this is a hard canvas to work on, but we tried our best. Try to get it as good as possible. But y'all let me know what y'all think of this haircut in the comments, guys. I appreciate y'all YouTube. Until next time.